Hi guys, Anna here and welcome back to my digital art channel. Today we're talking about the Procreate 5X update and I'm very excited for all of the features I discovered and I can't wait to share them with you. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments down below and without further ado, let's dive right in. All right guys, let's get started. One of the first and most exciting things I want to talk about is the ability to control filters with your pen and not just filters on a layer. When you go to your adjustments tab, first of all, you'll notice that they are kind of broken down by these groups and there are a few additional filters, which we'll talk about in a second, but there's one more that's hidden. Let's say we want to change the hue, saturation and brightness, but we don't want to touch the whole layer because the skin looks good. We just want to touch the iris. What we can do is click on it and then you have your two options to control the whole layer or to use pencil and then whatever you color that will be controlled. So I'm going to select pencil. That then you can select which brush you want to use with the filter. And as you can see, it only changes what I'm touching with the pencil. Everything else is left unchanged. And the best part is the opacity is also controlled. So when I press hard versus when I press slightly, you can see the difference that makes. And now we can make adjustments that we weren't able to do before. We would have to make a selection or duplicate a layer, but now we can just kind of change the thing based on whatever the pen touches. Let's say I don't want to do this. I can just also tap once. That's also a new thing that's in addition to Procreate 5X. This kind of little menu where we can undo certain things and it kind of tra tra tracks backwards. We can preview, so before and after, apply, cancel, and reset, right? Awesome. So the next thing is, is the new layers that we have. One of them being the gradient map. These three were previously in Procreate app, the gradient map is new and it's super, super exciting because now what we can actually do is have gradient maps. If you've used Photoshop, you've probably used gradient maps before and you know how it works. But in this case, we have a few pre-made ones and we can also make new ones. So if you click the plus icon, you can select whichever colors you want and as many as you want to and you can make your own filters. Once you're done, you just click done and now this new gradient is created. We don't have to keep it, we can just select a different one still. If you don't like this gradient, tap and hold and click delete. If you like one of the pre-made filters that they have but you want to play around with it but you don't want to destroy the gradient, you can as well hold, duplicate it now you can see we have a copy, then we will open it and we can play around with their filter and add more colors if we like. And then hit done. Another filter that we have is called Bloom. It kind of burns through your image. It's a cool addition or effect at the end of when you're already done your painting. So to adjust it, we're just going to use the pen or your finger, it doesn't really matter. And as you can see, it kind of burns it adds that like crazy kind of cool goal glow. We can have the transition as much or as little of it as you want. Then the size of it and the actual burn. The next one is called glitch. And I feel like that's really cool. We can um, have different types of glitches. So let's add some glitching. And of course you have your adjustments. There's a wave one, signal, diverge. Another effect is called halftone. And if we adjust it, you'll be able to see the halftone from very large to barely visible. Or screen print. 
or a newspaper. These could be very fun additions. Let's talk about one more. This one is the last one and it's called Chromatic Aberration. I love it, it is so fun. So here we have the perspective one, but let's talk about this place for a second. When you move your finger, it also changes the angle of the displacement. And because I already alpha locked this image, it kind of creates this funky effect. But if I'm going to un alpha lock it and do the same thing, then you'll be able to actually see the outline of it on the sides. That is so fun. And of course you have your blur and transparency. We also have the perspective where you select where the perspective starts and then move around from there. We also have the fall off and the transition. These are just very fun to play around with at the end of the painting to add some special effects and just something fun and unique and funky to your artwork. So another cool update is concerning the palettes. I don't know if you use them, but they're actually very, very cool. You can create your own palettes and reuse them in your work or just create a palette before you start a painting. So you are kind of limiting yourself to a specific palette, which actually can improve your painting. Anyway, when we create plus, we don't have to create a new palette from scratch. We can choose a file from new camera or file or photos and Procreate will automatically create a palette for you. So let's give it a shot. Click on new from photos. And there we have the palette from the image. It took the image and it created a palette for it, which is so cool. There's actually another way to do this. We just have to open the photos app on the side. Then we're going to open the palettes and instead of choosing a photo, you can just take it and drag it over here. And it automatically created the color palette for us. And now the best part is that we used to not be able to color drip from the palette, but now we can. So we just can take a color and then drip it on top of the layer that whatever layer we want to use. So it also speeds up our process. So we're about halfway through all of the new features of the Procreate 5X. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. And if you are, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more digital art content and hit the notification bell icon so you don't miss any future content as well. It really does help a lot my new baby channel. So thank you so much. Now let's look at the changes in the selection tool. We have a new option that's called color fill. So basically, whichever color I choose at the moment, when I select the color fill and I start selecting, it will automatically fill it with this color. Like that. And now we have it filled. It just saves time. And then, of course, if we don't want it to be in that color, we can always just go ahead and remove certain parts. Like so. And now, we just deselect and we have whatever shape it is that we created. We can, of course, also choose the color fill and then go for like a rectangle or ellipse and it will automatically do the same exact thing and help us create sharper um, shapes, whether you want to do it freehand or not. Another cool thing is that now we can adjust the bounding box of the selection. Make sure color fill is not on and then go to the selection tool. And here is the bounding box. Before we could adjust it, which we can still do now, we can rotate it and change it around and then continue adjusting it. And that brings me to snapping, which is also a new option. When you click it, you will have the magnetics or snapping turn on, we have the distance and velocity. You can play around with that, but basically it will help us snap to particular lines and points or like help us snap to the side, have perfect angle rotation. We have that your 90 degrees, 75 degrees is all popping up 
and we're just able to snap it to different lines and different objects. Another cool option is the quick menu. As you know, if you swipe with three fingers, you get access to your quick menu, which helps you speed up the time while you're drawing. We have the new layer, flipping, copying, merging, whatever. But now you can actually have a different menu all of your own. If you just click in the middle on the quick menu one, there is a plus button and now we have a quick menu two. Right now everything says no action, but if you hold on it, let's do it again. If you hold on it, there's different options that you can choose from. We have your alpha lock, right? And then we can do like open color palette, paint, paste and whatever, right? So you make your own menu. And if you ever don't like it, you just swipe and delete. But that's also like really cool so you can customize. It's kind of like shortcuts. Now let's say we're working on this painting and we want to add flowers to her hair. Um, so what we can do is obviously open the photos on the side or now you have the option to create a reference window inside of this um, actual workspace in Procreate. So we have to go here to the actions and then canvas and then there is a new option here that's called reference. So when we hit that, we get a new window. Basically this window right now shows us the canvas. So if we are zoomed in very closely and we're working on something, but we want to still see the big picture, we can do so because we have this big reference image. As you can see, it updates all, like right away, super cool. Um, but another way to use this reference window is go to image and then you can import an image. So let's just import this one. And you can adjust the size of this as make it as small or big as you want. And now we see these flowers so we can go ahead and create our own flowers here without having to add this um, image to our actual layers. But what if you do want to add it to the layers, but then you don't want to see it in the Procreate video, you know, the video replay. If I right now add a photo, place it here. When I go to the video and time lapse replay, and I'm just going to scroll. It's going to end with us seeing the reference image. But if we don't want to do that, there's actually an option for it. We can go to the actions again and add and then insert a photo. But instead of just hitting insert a photo, we can swipe and hit insert a private photo. So let me choose a different one so you can see that it's actually not going to be showing. Here's the private photo, right? We have it here and it says private. Let's create a new a layer and start drawing so we can see it on the video, right? Let's go back to the video, time lapse replay. Now let me scroll. There you go. We don't actually see this image because it's on a private layer. And we can always just add different notes to that layer and do whatever we want with it. It's not going to be shown on the video. And here we can also import again. And now we're working with a different image. And once you are done with it, you can just hit clear, go back to the canvas and just continue working on your beautiful piece. The next one I want to talk about is the scribble feature. With a new update on your iPad, you'll be able to scribble and then it transforms it into text, which is exactly what we can do. So if we go here and say add text, here we have the text. And here we have OMG. Right? And if we need to delete something, we just erase it. It's super fast if you need to write a lot or if you want to write notes, but let's say your drawing, your writing is pretty messy. So you want it to be in a nice text and it works perfectly. We can do the same on layers. So if we need to rename it, let's just erase this and write signature. Perfect. So now we don't actually have to have the keyboard pop up and we can just do everything with a pen, just makes it faster that way. So the latest one is actually in your widgets tab. We're going to swipe and hit edit 
Then select plus button and choose Procreate. There are three different sizes to choose from and it should show the latest work you were working on. And done. So now you can always see what it is that you're working on and keep being inspired to finish the actual work. And the final one is Procreate on your face. Now you can paint directly onto your face without all the mess your face paint update live and even play your animations. Perform, record and share with your fans. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show you exactly how this one works because I do have an older version of iPad and there isn't just this option just doesn't exist in there yet, unfortunately. So I don't know if it will, but it's definitely something you should play around with if you have the newer iPad. So that's it. Those are all of the new features in the Procreate 5X update. I don't know about you, but I am super excited to get started and draw again. Every time there's a new update, there's something new and cool to explore. I can't wait to get started drawing. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe for more future awesome digital art content, and I will see you next time. Bye.